G'day guys, we've got an economics problem today which is going to assess our understanding of consumer and producer surplus. So what we have here is we've got the market for watermelons which is displayed by this graph and it's asking us a series of questions regarding to the producer and consumer surplus derived by this market. So part A is asking us if John is willing to pay as much as $8 for a watermelon, how much surplus will he receive if he pays the market price for a watermelon? Okay, so this is going straight into consumer surplus. Now consumer surplus is the difference between the maximum in which John is willing to pay and the price that he actually pays. So basically, if John is willing to pay $8 for a watermelon and he pays the market price for a watermelon, what we're asked for is how much less is the market price than the price that he's willing to pay, or $8. So we go to our graph and we find the equilibrium price and quantity, which is here. So this is our equilibrium, let's just put a little E here. And that's going to be $6. So for part A of this question, the consumer surplus that he is going to receive is going to be the price that he's willing to pay, which is $8, minus, or the difference between the two, minus the price that he actually pays, which is the equilibrium price, the market price, which is $6. So the consumer surplus that he receives at that particular price is 2 bucks, And that is their answer for part A. Okay, now onto part B, which says, suppose Figgy Farms requires at least $5 per watermelon to be willing to sell in this market. What is Figgy's producer surplus for one watermelon in this market? Okay, so they're willing to sell a watermelon for $5. The market price for a watermelon, as we saw in part A, is $6. So again, for producer surplus, it's exactly the same method as consumer surplus. All it is, is it's the difference between the market price, which in this case is $6, and the price that the producer is willing to sell into this market at, which is $5. So the difference here, guys, is just a dollar. Okay, so on to part C, which is asking us how much total consumer surplus is received in this market. So the total consumer surplus is the area in this market which is below the demand curve, but above the market price. So the total consumer surplus is the area of this triangle here. So this is our total consumer surplus here. Now, to solve part C, we just have to calculate the area of this triangle. So let's go about doing that. So we know that the area of this triangle is equal to 1 half times the base times the height. So this is going to be equal to 1 half times the base of this triangle, which is the quantity at equilibrium, or 200, times the height, which is the maximum difference between the demand and the market price, which is 11 takes 6, let's just put that in brackets as well so you guys can follow what I'm doing, take 6, which is going to be 5, and that's equal to 1 half of 200 times 5, which is 1 half times 1,000, so is equal to $500. So our total consumer surplus, we can just write down here, is equal to $500. Okay, now on to part D. So we're asked how much total producer surplus is received in this market. Okay, so the total producer surplus, similar to the consumer surplus, is the area above the supply line, but below the market price. So the total producer surplus is going to be this area here, or this triangle here. So let's just write producer surplus there. Cool. So what we've been asked to do is find the area of this triangle here. So like part C, we're going to just write the area of this triangle. Again, I'm just going to write it fully out so you guys are well aware of what I'm doing. The area of the triangle is a half base times height, which is equal to a half times the base, which is again 200 times the height, which in this case is 6 take 4, which is equal to 6 take 4 is 2, 2 times 200 is 400, half of that is 200. Cool. So we can then write the total producer surplus is equal to 
$200. Okay, so finally on to part E. So it's asking us what is the total surplus in the market? Now the total surplus in this market, guys, is going to be equal to just the total consumer surplus plus the total producer surplus. So it is the area contained by both of these triangles. Cool, so let's just go ahead and write that down. So we find that this is going to be equal to the total consumer surplus, which is $500, plus the total producer surplus, which is $200. And when added, this is going to equal $700. Great, so the total surplus basically means the total amount of benefit that can be gained from both consumers and producers from engaging in a free market system. So basically, everybody in this market benefits up to this equilibrium point here. So the guys who would, would pay $11 for a watermelon and get it for $6 are the ones who are benefiting the most. The producers who would rather sell it for 4 but can sell it for 6 are also benefiting the most but you still continue to get more and more benefit until you get to equilibrium where any more watermelons produced will actually cause a decrease in total surplus. So at this point here, the equilibrium point, you have what's called a maximum surplus. Great. So I hope this video helped, guys. If it did, definitely give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos all the time. Um, but... With these kind of questions, it just pays to go over a few of them before an exam, just so you understand the basic mechanics of how to calculate the surpluses. But guys, not very complicated question. A few trial runs will do. But yeah, keep bashing your head against the wall until it actually falls down. I promise it will. But keep practicing, practicing, practicing. But above all, guys, just keep enjoying your economics. And I'll hopefully see you again soon.